it's Chelsea from Paper Rock Tears Studio and today I'm sharing with you another artist trading card a day video. This is for uh, prompts 14 and 15, days 14 and 15 because I'm doing them in order. And the prompts were denim fabric and the other one was manila card. And uh, that's because all month we're doing surfaces as well as the ATCs a day kind of a theme all month of different types of surfaces to work on in your art and then also we're doing ATC a day so it's a busy month so I didn't have any denim, denim fabric I had this this ATC that already had some paint scraped on it and that blue color that was in the middle I thought it was the color of denim jeans you know that's what I thought the color was and I also found a piece of, of scrapbooking paper that was patterned like denim so I figured I could use that. The first thing I did was to fill up uh, the card with a little bit more color, some dark blue, some uh, different color of orange and green because it just seemed kind of, you know, it's just some paint scraped on there that was left over from something and who knows when or what and I just thought it looked a little bit incomplete. Then I took a white gel pin and um, that's a Sakura uh, Signo ball pin I think it's called I don't know I don't usually use those I usually use the Posca because I have trouble with it writing smoothly but I decided to go ahead and use it and I made stitching all the way around the outside of the card and then I made myself a little pattern out of just scratch paper for the shape of a pocket so like a pocket on the back of jeans you know because that's the main thing that's that's uh, is made out of denim. I mean there's coveralls and skirts and vests and things too that are made out of this type of fabric but jeans are really the thing right and everybody wears jeans pretty much everybody does uh, boys and girls um, they come in all shapes and sizes and they're just they're a great casual thing to wear so I made this pocket and then I put the stitching on the pocket as if you might see like an old pair of Wranglers or something like that back in the day they had stitching around everything and I think actually now that I think about it the stitching was not white it was probably some type of a gold color a gold thread but oh well whatever <laughs> I put a double row as if the pocket was stitched on because you know they needed to be strong so that uh, people could put their wallet or uh, in, in the case of my hometown back in the day, their can of Copenhagen. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, that's the kind of school I went to when I was in high school. <laughs> A lot of people chewed tobacco, which is weird. I never did. But, but you'd see like the outline where the round um, Copenhagen can was in the back pocket of the jeans and then it had been worn away. And so you'd get like this white circle. Anyway. Completely off to topic. So uh, I stitched everything on there and I even put a little decorative stitching across it. Um, like some of them had back in the day. Then I wanted to make a little separate something that could fit in the pocket. And I was thinking about guys and I was thinking about the poem about um, the difference between girls and boys and the snips and snails and puppy dog tails and all that and I thought it would be cute to put a frog in the pocket. Of course if you really put a frog in your pocket the frog would probably not survive so please don't do that because that would be cruel but just the idea of little boys running around collecting rocks and sticks and and uh, you know stuff out in nature. Do kids even do that anymore? Or do they just do it online? I mean, you know, life has changed a lot. I, I was afraid to let my kids out too much. I mean, I, I do a little bit, but not not to the extent that I ran around all day in the neighborhood and came back when the, when the street lights came on, you know. <laughs> um, so I have this stamp and it's a cute little illustration of a frog and it was exactly the right size. So I took a piece of watercolor paper and I collaged different scraps of greens on both the front and the back. This piece is gonna be removable from the pocket. It probably will stay in there, you know, but, but the idea is that it could be removable from the pocket. So I wanted to make sure that it was decorated on both sides. So I stamped the 
image on there. I cut the frog out and then I went around the back and put the illustration lines on the back as well so that it really looks like it's two-sided. You could have the frog facing the back or the frog facing the front. Obviously his face is on the front so it's cuter and <laughs> you would probably want to have that part sticking out but you get the idea. Um, I made it two-sided. So then I added just a little bit of color to it with some crayons and I thought I was done with it and then I came up with something funny to do with it later so I changed it but um, cute little frog fits in the pocket okay time to attach the pocket oh I was showing you what it looks like close up so that you could see it's got a lot of different variations of, of green colors because of the collage and um, it makes it more interesting than just cutting it out of a piece of green card or something you know so I glued the pocket on but I I wanted it to look a little bit more authentic than that so I got a couple little yellow brads like mini brads these are like paper fasteners and I punched little tiny holes and put them through and then opened them up on the back so that um, it looks like there's little rivets because jeans always had those little rivets holding things in places tucked and and I when I put the glue on I put it over the edges only and left the top open and the center of the pocket open so that it would be a true pocket. So then I wanted some words and I just decided to make a, a play on words of a uh, bird in the hand is better than two in the bush, something like that. And I said, a frog in the pocket is better than two in the hand or something like that. Or eat. A frog in the pocket, pocket equals two in the hand. I don't know, whatever. You just like a little play on words. Then I thought it would be cute if the frog had a heart for a tummy and a heart for a butt. <laughs> I know, I'm weird. It's okay. So I punched out some pink paper and put it on the tummy because, you know, oftentimes animals have a lighter or a different color on their stomach than they do on their back. Like dogs do, cats do, goats. I mean, a lot of animals do, and I think probably frogs do too. Although I haven't, I haven't actually seen a frog recently, nor have I picked one up to see what the underside of it is like. But I thought it would be cute to add that little uh, bit of color by putting the pink on the stomach and then putting it the other direction on the back so that it has like a little booty thought it would be funny. So then I flipped over the card. I put some tape over the brads just to make sure that they're not sticking out too much. And then I put my back on the card. And that was number 14 with denim. The surface being denim. Of course, not real denim. That would be similar to painting on the canvas like uh, day, what was it, two or three or something. Um, you would get the same texture, but it looks like denim, so uh, good enough. So the next one was Manila card. Now that's the stuff that shipping tags are made out of. Also file folders, like those those inexpensive file folders um, that you can sort things with. Those are made out of Manila cardstock. Has something to do with it being originally made in Manila, like I think that's the Philippines. I think I don't know, but anyway. That's what it's called. It's kind of an off-white color and it's it's a smooth stock, um, not very absorbent and it's just it's just another surface, another option to work on. So I cut this one, this ATC size one out of a uh, out of a shipping tag and then I grabbed another shipping tag to use along with it and just show you the thing that I cut it out of. And then I decided to just do some abstraction on here um, using a couple uh, different colors of sprays that I had that won't spray anymore. So I just have to either pour them out or um, use the little straw inside to make marks. Then I used some uh, water soluble crayons and added a little bit more color here and there just being super abstract. I started out with a type of pencil. It's called a Jerry's Jumbo Jet Pencil and it's um, impregnated charcoal 
with oil. So uh, it's just this big fat pencil that's easy to press hard with because it's big in your hand. It's fun to use. Um, I have a lot of different pens and pencils and things. I blended some of the uh, watercolor, not all of it. Some of it I just left crayon-like in the background. <clears throat> I, I added a little bit of um, collage just for a different texture. And I picked out ones that were translucent so you can see through them. When you uh, look at the, the close-ups at the end, you'll be able to see that the, the papers are colored, but you can still see through them. So it just makes it more interesting, more fun. I like doing this type of abstract work. It's uh, just something to do, you know. Putting some, some marks and some color on something is is fun. And Manila cardstock will hold up to this, but it will not hold up to the full mixed media experience. If you really get it wet and, you know, put a lot of drips and stuff on it, it tends to curl and it will actually start to peel eventually. The tops of it will peel off. So it's not really the right type of, of uh, surface for a full-on you know, going crazy, but with a little bit of watercolor crayon, a little bit of mark making, it works great. It's stiff enough. It's, it's, you know, it's good. So then, um, I think my final touch after I finished gluing down everything, which I just glued with a glue stick I didn't go crazy. Um, I used a fat white Posca pen, one of the heavier ones. And I had this idea to make this ATC into kind of a paper doll, um, a real, a, a not, not one that has all the different articulated pieces. You could do that as long as it can all fold in. Remember, people are fussy about artist trading cards. And if they are not three and a half by two and a half exactly, people get really touchy about it. If you're trading in things or swapping or whatever. But I figure if it can fold in to the right size, it's fine. So I decided to make a head and neck and then make it into a little paper doll, a simple paper doll. So I used the other piece of uh, some of that other manila um, paper from the tag to draw a face. I realized that my neck was too short because I need to have something to fasten it to the card. So I ended up uh, cutting it out and then gluing it onto uh, the, the other piece of paper. So now it's two times as thick, but that the neck, the chin actually cuts off and then the neck is there. So it, it actually gives it a little bit of shadowing under the chin, which is useful. So then I put a long neck on it. Then I used the water-soluble crayons. These are Neocolor 2 um, made by Coranda Ash. Um, I think that's how you pronounce it. And I just used my scrap piece of Manila cardstock as a palette, and I drew the crayons really hard down onto the Manila cardstock. I picked it up with a water brush. It's a water tank brush. It has water in the handle and a little valve that I can squeeze to make it wetter or less wet. I also have a little rag to um, calm it down if it gets too wet. So I'm using uh, different colors of crayon to color my doll head. And it's a female, you can make, you can make anything you want. Um, I might expand this idea and make a few more different ones just to give you some ideas. I haven't made any art dolls recently so this is a very abbreviated idea of an art doll, uh, paper doll. But you could make an animal. You could make, um, you know, it, it just anything. I mean, it's it's crazy how much fun you could have with this idea. As long as it can, as long as the pieces can fold back in to the two and a half by three and a half, I don't think anyone could complain about it. I mean, people could complain, but they shouldn't. <laughs> I've had some experience, as you can tell, <laughs> with some people who were not necessarily uh, super kind back at the day. I mean, this was a long time ago, but 
if you're going to swap them, you better make sure they're three and a half by two and a half. That's all I got to say. People will have a fit. So I just continued coloring. Uh, I think I did speed this up. Um, I don't know if I did. Actually, I should have sped it up a little bit to make it a little bit shorter. But uh, with the with the watercolor cranes, you need to put more than one layer of color on. Um, it once it soaks into the Manila cardstock, it gets much lighter. So you need to uh, put, you know, keep layering. It takes it takes a little bit of time to do like skin tones and things like that. Even on watercolor paper, it's the same thing. The crayon looks really vivid and then you blend it out and it soaks in and uh, gets lighter. It's just the nature of watercolor water soluble products. So I also colored the back of the head. Um, I'm not sure why because I didn't color the back of the card because I was you know intending to put my information on the back of the card so I didn't color the back of it but I did color the back of the head. It's kind of a thing I do. When I make paper art dolls, I do them on both sides. I make sure that the clothes and everything go all the way around to the back side. I just don't like them to be <laughs> unfinished. So I guess that's what I was thinking. Plus there's two layers of vanilla cardstock there because I had to extend the neck. So uh, Once I was done coloring, I got out a little illustration pen and did add a few illustration lines. Um, making things a little bit more crisp with that. And a few highlights with my white Posca pen. Darken things back up by taking the crayon directly to the paper, which makes it a little bit more intense. I hope that you guys are enjoying this ATC a day. Um, all these videos this month in June 2022. Um, there's lots of ATC videos because I've been doing this challenge in Art Joy of Sharing our art community on Facebook for probably five years, maybe. So, so many artist trading cards. So, I punched a hole and attached the head with a little mini brad. I trimmed down the card so that there's a bit of a slope on the shoulders and then... Um, uh, inked the edges with a sponge all the way around all the all the edges of everything including the head and uh, then I punched out a little flower and attached it to her hair and I wanted it to be colored on the back too um, what else <clears throat> oh and then I decided since the manila cardstock was the main you know the thing the prompt was about the vanilla cardstock that I would add just a very simple vine design just with black and manila over the top of the abstracted area to bring back that manila cardstock idea is what it is it's manila cardstock so I did it with my little uh, jumbo jet pencil but then I went over it with black Posca to make it a little bit more dark it seemed kind of gray rather than black and I really wanted it to stand out so if you've enjoyed this video of number 14 and 15 give me a thumbs up leave me a comment or a question if you have one below subscribe if you haven't already <clears throat> and come join our art joy of sharing group so that you can participate in the challenge use the hashtag AJOS ATC a day 2022 and of course you can join my channel membership if you'd like to for $1.99 a month for, for exclusive content in real time every 15th of the month. That's it for me. Thanks. Bye-bye.